Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. I hope you guys all enjoy. As always, all today's stories are timestamped down below. Let's get into our first one, though, all about the doc controversy. And I want to clarify and say we still have a lot to hear from this guy in the future. We still have a lot of promises that are left unwritten as of right now, a lot of high hopes in the future. But he actually has lived up to some of the few things he did say he was going to do as this past actually yesterday night. I'm going to link the stream down below for all of you. Doc himself came on stream with a webcam and a microphone. So for all of you guys who are curious what he sounds like, we already knew what he looked like, but not really in motion. He actually took his HLTV profile picture because they required it of him. Uh, so I'm going to link the full stream down below for all of you. Yes, Doc is an official person. We now know that for sure. But is he a cheater? Uh, all these past accusations, we still have yet to clarify as to what's going to happen. I can tell you guys from actually talking to him, he's going to try and clarify in the future sometime very soon all these allegations and clear the air after people like Richard Lewis and Thorne have gone after him about apparently playing in the past on some previously VAC banned accounts who were actually owned by a cheat coder. He's going to try and clarify pretty soon here and shortly uh, as soon as possible all the allegations out there and prove to all of us that he's not a cheater and that hopefully in the future as well he's going to move out of his house and actually be back and face it pro league so i just hope that you guys would all enjoy that the doc controversy is somewhat cleared up but there's still a lot of promises out there left unsatisfied we'll see if he satisfies those in the future and if you guys are a fan of the counter-strike reddit which i assume many of you guys are a lot of you guys kind of weird who watch these csk news episodes are very up to date on the news I i'm not really sure well, how that really correlates you guys watch these videos but i do appreciate it. So if all of you guys are actually Counter-Strike Reddit fans, you definitely know who Sam41Gaming is. Now I want to kind of uh, tell you guys in the future, I'm going to have a dedicated video for this guy. He has been known over the course of the past month or so. I actually had four posts do very well on Reddit, two of which actually led the global Reddit itself in terms of upvotes. And he's actually one of the few people out there that I know of who are making IRL CSGO skins by hand painting them. Uh, yes, by hand. He actually has a video, a YouTube channel linked down below for all of you guys. And he sometimes streams the content as well. And he actually exploded Reddit a couple days ago and actually last week as well as he began selling counter-strike skins in terms of keychains as well as big skins he's actually been known in the past to contact pros and sell skins to nothing as well as shroud and skadoodle and other cloud nine and other members of the pro scene as well in the future so i cannot wait to make a dedicated video all about this guy uh, and again his youtube channel is gonna be linked down below so for all of you guys who are excited to see that kind of content i cannot wait to dedicate an entire video to him and his whole process of making csgo skins in real life he's actually made a real life m4a1s golden coil a real life off Asimov, a real life AK-47 Fire Serpent, and other really cool things. He's also now expanded to CSGO keychains, and they've already sold out. So it's pretty crazy to see. In the future, he might actually send me some stuff as well to show off to you guys, but I cannot wait to promote his stuff. It's just really cool to see CSGO people out there taking the love of the game to the absolute extreme and actually making real life creations out of it. Now also, talking about the doc and FPL, we also had FPL, as usual, announcing their players of the month and players who actually managed to qualify for the Face It Pro League, this time around for the European Face at Pro League, it was actually a player by the name of Deos, and unfortunately enough, within four hours of his big announcement, you know, he works and grinds the entire month of June to be that player who actually qualifies for FPL Europe in the month of June, that number one player over there, and within four hours, his account was actually tracked to another account who had a former VAC ban, and his uh, his FPL membership for life has now been revoked. So very unfortunate to see, as well as face it, Mikey did clarify. A lot of people are now, you know, taking these accusations and saying, okay, these people cheated when they were kids back in 2014 or 2012. Well, it's not really fair, which I would maybe agree with in some circumstances, maybe like a simple his circumstance where he did cheat way, way back in the day. You know, you're a lot younger then. You don't really you know, know what's best for you in the future. You don't know you're going to be a possible CSGO pro player in the future. But in this case, face it, Mikey did clarify this guy actually cheated and had backband accounts on multiple occasions and two occasions actually backband accounts within two weeks of each other. So Deos, I do apologize. He is the first member ever to actually reach FPL and be kicked out of FPL within four hours. And speaking of some Cloud9 members earlier. We actually have Cloud9 repping new jerseys out there. Sticko also being involved in this. Of course, they're going to feel these jerseys for the first time at ESL Cologne. And I have to say, I'm not I'm not a big fan of you know showing off new jerseys out there. This is one of the first teams out there we've seen new jerseys for in a long time. I guess you could say MeBR and their new jerseys, but it's literally just a black shirt with MeBR in it. But these are actually very, very cool to see. Red Bull doing a great job on that. And speaking of Red Bull, we actually had them do an interview with Smuya himself from Team Big, and he said some very, very vulgar things. I'm not going to repeat the exact words. I will show you what he said on screen though and I do have to say I admire this guy's dedication, his tenacity and his just straight up way of interviewing. He just says what he wants to wants to do in the future. Of course is coming off their loss to Liquid in the instant match. This is actually a deciding matchup to go to top four at ESL Belo Horizonte and it was Team Big who actually lost that 2-0 sweep in that best of three. So it's going to be really cool to see at ESL Cologne if they do match up Team Big versus Team Liquid. If Team Big does manage to beat them that'll be really cool to see him fulfilling his words. But then the poll 
polar opposite, if Team Liquid in any fashion actually dominates Team Big, well, this could really bite Smoothie in the butt. But I'm a believer. We'll see what happens at ESL Clone happening in a few days here, guys. It's going to be a big tournament, and I cannot wait to actually watch CSGO for the first time in a while. We have some big teams here at ESL Clone. Who's going to be a champion? We're gonna see. And in very sad news, I, I say sad because I just, I'm not really sure what the future of these pro players is. We've seen a lot of Swedish pros out there kind of struggle. Mike Lilly, I, I would say being one of them over the course of the past two years, and I, I've made videos about this in the past, it does seem as of right now, Digital Chaos, that was actually former team Enyoy. Enyoy was actually run under Mike Lilly for quite some time. I think it was five or six months. They then actually branded under Digital Chaos, and just five weeks later, within a month, just over a month later, it does seem Digital Chaos has now almost officially disbanded. They're left with two players on that roster, Michael Lilly being one of them, Pronax being another. Pronax has actually lost a lot these past two weeks with Godsent being sold off to Red Reserve. That was his original creation. And of course, we already know Michael Lilly's been now on 20 plus teams and who knows the future of either of those two players. I, I, I do feel bad, but at the same time, I'm still hopeful for where they're gonna go in the future. And now we do have them announcing though, no disbandment officially. They did announce though, two players, Benny and Pith, have been kicked off that team. They're now officially free agents out there, which again is a sad story in itself. The fall off of NIP. Pith, uh, you know, really kind of performing, uh, you could say, a decent level, and all of a sudden, now getting kicked off a team like Digital Chaos, who knows what's going to happen in the future, and I apologize for the sun, guys. Okay, quick clip to a uh, full screen here. I'm going to wait for the sun to go down. I'm going to go crack a Red Bull, because they did a great job of the interview. Um, how, are you, how are you guys, how are you, how are you guys doing out there? It's... This is why I can't record videos past 5 p.m. And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, we're reminded by the Face It standards out there. Now, I do agree with Thorne's latest video. If you guys did not see that, I'll link it down below about the qualification process for this major and possibly future majors as well. And in the past, we've had some pretty terrible qualifications too in terms of having the best teams at the CSGO major. And that's a whole subject in itself. You guys can watch the video about that. But also, there is one thing that Face It is seemingly doing very well, and that's actually the standards and the quality of living for all of their players and all the teams who actually make the minor and pass the minor as well. Kind of a reminder from Rush B Podcast, as well as HLTV, who originally reported on this. It's a reminder out there that for the Face It Minor and the major qualifier, the major itself, all 32 teams who actually qualify for the minor will also be offered these accommodations. Uh, at the hotels itself, there'll be a 24-hour gym, a 24-hour practice room. On top of that, a personal chef for every single player and person affiliated with each and every team, which is an amazing accommodation when you consider back, if you guys remember the WESG tournament for 2017 slash 2018, where we saw some of the worst player accommodations of all time. So definitely a major step up in terms of you have a million dollar prize pool for the major here, a million dollar prize pool for WESG over in China, some vast differences so far in what is offered. So I cannot wait to see some player pictures as to what's going to be shown up at the face at major. So again, all 32 teams who actually made the CIS, the Asian, the American, and the European minor, all 32 teams there get the same accommodations as the teams who actually make the major. So it's going to be really cool to see how exactly cool those are actually are. So uh, based off that as well, for our last two stories that are kind of semi stories leading into tomorrow's episode or sometime soon, I will be taking tomorrow off most likely because it's actually a, a planned holiday here in America, July 4th. And my family's actually going to be in town. So I'm very excited to see them and they're going to see the apartment. I did also finally get furniture. So an apartment tour is going to be coming this weekend. And on top of that, guys, I do plan on announcing more about my job and some special side projects coming very soon next week. So those are timeline on, I guess, other videos out there. But also more importantly, we do have rumors out there about nothing and exactly why he turned down the offer from Cloud9 to stand in for ESL Cologne. I do want to warn you guys right now, the reason why he turned them down is very anticlimactic, and I definitely was wrong. And on top of that, I'll, I'll show you guys in the next episode of CSK News the clip that got Anomaly banned from Twitch for 30 days. So, hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you all sometime soon, probably in a couple days. Some big announcements are definitely coming soon. Thank you all for the great support. I think we broke like 300 or 400 comments on yesterday's episode. You guys are absolutely insane. I will see you all tomorrow. And until then, my name is Jake Malik. You, goodbye, guys. I won't see you tomorrow. I lied. Two days.